a new fire station has taken shape in a fast-growing suburb of Edmonton, Alberta. Windermere Fire Station 31 is a marvel of modern design, engineering, and construction. Built with sustainability and resilience top of mind. But what does it take to get a fire station to net zero? Find out in our series, Behind Our Builds, with PCL Construction. There is no single path to constructing a net zero building, but they all start with a commitment to that goal and continue with collaboration and thorough planning. Throughout the design and construction of Station 31, PCL's in-house sustainability experts engaged with the city, architects and consultants to enhance design solutions, reduce costs, lean the schedule and drive value to the client. This careful planning, collaboration, and communication was crucial to ensure a successful net zero project. The relationship between builder, uh, the architect, and the owner was really super strong. This is probably one of the most collaborative approaches to construction I've ever seen. Our site guys, your site guys, um, the owner's site representative, really, really work closely. In the case of Station 31, the City of Edmonton committed to net zero, and the team determined that the goal could be met with a geothermal field for heating and cooling needs, a photovoltaic solar array for electricity, and a state-of-the-art building envelope to ensure as little wasted energy as possible. The geothermal portion of the building, they provide the heat base to heat the building and cool the building throughout the winter and the summer. The solar energy that is then taken from the solar array is used to run the building and a part of that is the heat exchanger which heats and cools the building and due to the tightness of the envelope that allows the heat and cooling to be maintained through the hot and the cool winters that we have and that allows for a very efficiently run building. But no project is ever completed without a few challenges, and the geothermal field presented some early ones. The design of the civil, as well as the geothermal undergrounds, um, there was conflicts there which we noticed early on in the project, and we had to have workshops with the architectural civil consultants as well as the geothermal experts. This allowed us to expand the parameters of the site and utilize more area as with the geothermal, the uniqueness of that, it, it needs space uh, to be installed in the job site. Ultimately, the geothermal field was made in an L shape outside the perimeter of the building itself, with the header pipes feeding into the building. Once the geothermal field was completed, the team got to the foundation pilings. They decided to use continuous flight augering for the 85 piles. You drill down with the, with the rig, um, the piles vary in depth between 6 metres of the smallest ones down to 21.5 metres. Once they've reached the depth of the pile, the concrete is then fed down the centre of the auger and then as they tremor out the hole, the concrete's in there, they drop the rebar cage and that causes our, our foundation solution. Once the underground structure was completed, it was time to move on to the installation of the metal framework and the above grade finishes. But first, the Canadian winter had something to say. Yeah, we've been clearing snow since 6.30 this morning, so we're kind of four hours in at the moment. We work together to get the main areas clear, so that's one of those challenges throughout the winter in Alberta, we're gonna have that, and we just have to navigate. The biggest thing is communication. We know it's coming. We, you know, we're always looking at the forecast, wind conditions, that was another thing this morning. We made sure to look at the forecast, so, we're not going to lift steel if it's, if it's above that parameters. After the snow is cleared sufficiently, it's time to get down to the steel work. Now it's the cold temperatures that present the greatest challenge. Steel construction during the winter months is always a challenge. With blowing snow and high winds and uh, low visibility, cold weather, many aspects of it uh, create unique install conditions. Uh, one aspect that we have to monitor very closely 
is the temperature. If the temperature drops below minus 18, we have to make the call if we're gonna be doing any type of steel to steel welding. But winter isn't always bad news for builders. One aspect about winter construction that is actually not so bad is the ground's frozen. So when we're moving around with our heavy equipment and trying to move heavy pieces of steel, we're not getting stuck in the mud. That being said, summer months are obviously a lot more pleasant and a lot more efficient for erecting steel. But with that can come the rain where you can get bogged down and then you're just playing in the mud. One prominent feature of Station 31 is the peaked roof of the apparatus bay. It was created using 11 asymmetrical trusses, which span the full 80 feet and are 30 feet tall, each weighing around 13,500 pounds. They were built in two pieces, then transported to site, bolted together, and hoisted into position. On the next episode... The angle of the solar panels were designed for the angle that would be optimum for the Edmonton area. So you couldn't take this design and put it in Calgary or put it in any other location. Buildings like this, uh, projects like this, push the envelope and force us into those places that allow those technological solutions to be dreamed up. 